Hello, my name's Chris Chatfield and I'm the Technical Services Manager at Orbis Software. My intention today is to take you through our Web Services Connector tool, specifically in conjunction with connecting to Exchange Server 2010 Web Services. This will be a, a video intended for a technical audience and I'm assuming that you've already established the business case uh, regarding taking data from your ERP system and creating contacts, tasks, calendar items, etc. in your Exchange server. The prerequisites uh, in order to do this is that you have the Task Center server on build 1171, which is in fact uh, SR4 with uh, Hotfix SR4E. You would then have installed by means of a tool pack our Web Services Connector tool. And in fact, you can see here on screen, I have such a tool installed and that's at build 482. That is in fact our release one of the Web Services Connector tool. Now, before we um, start connecting to our Exchange server, I'd like to give you a little bit of background. Um, first of all, um, the connector tool, uh, we're going to be using SOAP services. Um, that's what's provided um, by the Exchange Web Services. And we need to be able to read in the what's referred to as the WSDL file. So here I'm talking about the Web Services description language. Uh, it's an XML document um, which describes the web service, both its location and the operations and methods that you can accomplish through that web service. Uh, what you'll see on my screen at the moment, I've plugged in the relevant URL to my Exchange server and I am in fact reading back the WSDL through IE. So that's stage one. I've also, um, as you can see, this URL is uh, HTTPS, so it's a secured connection. So I've had to take care of uh, the trust relationships between my Task Center server and the Exchange server. And I've done that by means of issuing a certificate. You can see here I have a valid uh, certificate installed. Uh, you may wish to refer to your IDT department on how to do this. Um, I've then copied that certificate to uh, the local uh, file system. And then I've registered uh, that certificate against a number of services. Now this is quite important. So if I, if I now go into a snap in, okay, and I add a snap in uh, to register certificates, I'm interested in all three of these. I require this certificate that I've copied to the file system to be registered against the user account, the service account, and that service account will be the task center server and my computer account. So if I add those uh, services to begin with. Okay, so here I'm going to pick off the task center uh, server service. There we go. Okay, and finally I'm going to add a certificate for the computer account. I need all three of those. Okay. I've already uh, been into these uh, three areas and I have in fact in imported the certificate for my Exchange server. So basically what I've done here is right click, um, go into import, browse to the location where I've saved that certificate and imported it. So you see I've got uh, a certificate here for the current user. I have the Exchange Service Certificate for the service for uh, Tarsant Server. There we go. And I also have a certificate uh, registered for the local computer. Okay. There we go. So I've taken care of the, the uh, certificate and certification. Okay, having done that, I am now in a position to create this connector inside Task Center. So I'm going to use this URL with the confidence that I am able to actually read back a whistle from that location. So I go into Task Center, I open up my Web Services Connector tool that's in my, uh, this if you like, is very similar to um, a global uh, database connection. Uh, ODB, CLADB, you may have been familiar with our products and configured global connectors before through those technologies. 
The Web Service Connector tool is in fact in the Execute category. So here we go, if I now add a new configuration, okay, I'm connecting, this is merely a label name, okay, to enable me to identify which connector to use uh, when I start my task configuration. So I'm gonna call that Exchange 2010 uh, Video Demo. There we go. Okay. Now, um, I have in fact three routes through which I can import this WSDL file. Okay, it may be that I've already downloaded it from the internet and I've got it on my local file system. So I would simply browse to the file path uh, to the WSDL file. Alternatively, I may decide to download it directly from the internet. And that is in fact the option I'm going to go for. And there is the URL that I've established earlier um, works and successfully reads that WSDL file. My third option would have been had someone supplied me with a configuration file, what we refer to as a TCWX file, I could have browsed and imported that um, TCWX. And inside there uh, would have been um, a, a pre-established um, connection uh, with some operations, etc. Okay, so today we are opting to download this WSDL directly via this URL. And if I click OK now, what you're seeing now is it's actually located a document and it's now parsing that document and reading the content uh, into uh, the Task Center database. Okay, I've successfully read the WSDL file. And you'll notice as a result of that, I can now see a number of operations in my web connector. These are referred to as single operations. Further down through the interface, you can see there's an area for a user to create their own multiple operations. And we'll discuss this more in a different video and a different module. If we look at our endpoints, we are connected to an Exchange service endpoint. We are on Exchange 2010, we are also required, and I think you'll find this is the same on 2007, to then override the URL used to read in the WSDL with an ASMX uh, document uh, in order to uh, produce the actual runtimes. So I've keyed in here the relevant URL in order to do that. And I've checked the use of the old style ASP.NET service proxy. Now, as a rule of thumb, uh, we are required to check this if your web service has the extension of ASNX. If the service has been written with the uh, newer technologies, uh, the WCF, the Windows uh, Communication Foundation, where you have an extension of SVC, then of course you are not required to check this option. Moving on to the constants tab. In here, I can put in predetermined values. I may do decide to do that for something like uh, a logon, where I could pass in uh, some credentials. Okay, and uh, key in the credentials and supply a password. Now, in actual fact, on Exchange Server, we'll see in a moment that that's not specifically necessary, but there will be other web services that you connect to where this could be a desirable um, addition uh, to the connector tool. And equally, I can put in any other uh, constants that I may desire to use through that web service. Moving on now to the Authentication tab, on Exchange, uh, both 2007 and 2010, I am required to Windows Authenticate. So I've supplied um, some credentials here. So it's quite simple. It's just a, a, a logon script. And I've supplied the relevant credentials uh, for that connection. You can see that we also can deal with a basic um, authentication as well. And of course, we could switch it off if your web service uh, doesn't require it. Whereupon we could use the constants inside the task at runtime to produce uh, a logon. And there we go. We've now constructed a web service connector onto Exchange 2010.